terrifying new video as Trump supporters stormed the Capitol. We need fresh patriots to the front. The mass crushing of police officer between a riot shield and a metal door. <laughs> Bleeding and screaming for help. As police in riot gear try to hold the line, the mob keeps pushing. One of them yelling out, grab their damn shields. Other videos showing Trump supporters spraying chemicals and beating the police with bats and metal pipes. The images and the fallout from Wednesday's insurrection continues to reverberate as the country's leaders and law enforcement look to hold those responsible, including President Trump, accountable. I've been saying for well over a year, he is not fit to serve. He is not fit to serve. He's one of the most incompetent presidents in the history of the United States of America. At the White House, the president more isolated than ever, both personally and now offline. In a stunning decision, Twitter banning the president permanently, quote, due to the risk of further incitement of violence. The president, who had over 88 million followers, is a prolific tweeter, using the social media platform to announce policies as well as to attack those he disagreed with. This hits the president where it hurts probably the most. I mean, Twitter is the instrument that fueled his rise to power. Uh, it is uh, the instrument that has caused some of the biggest problems for this White House over the past four years, but it's the way the president goes directly to his supporters. Yesterday, Trump releasing this video on Twitter, where he seemed to denounce the events at the Capitol. I am outraged by the violence, lawlessness, and mayhem. The president released that video under enormous pressure uh, from Republicans, from some of his own staff members, even from members of his family, but he is not happy with it. This was the video where he, for the first time, condemned the violence and said he would work towards an orderly transition. And now I'm told the president regrets saying those things. In what may be his last tweet from his at real Donald Trump account, President Trump announced that he will not be going to the inauguration on January 20th. One of the few things he and I have ever agreed on. It's a good thing I'm not showing up. Even his bitter opponent, Hillary Clinton, attended President Trump's inauguration four years ago. She wrote that she felt a responsibility to be there, to demonstrate the peaceful transfer of power. I don't think anybody really thought Trump was going to go to Joe Biden's inauguration. Uh, it, just, it just never seemed plausible. Now he's made what was obvious official, and it's an incredible break with precedent. The president tried to tweet from the official at POTUS account, but Twitter deleted them, saying in a statement to ABC News, Using another account to try to evade a suspension is against our rules. Even though there are only 12 days before the Biden administration takes office, there are increasing calls for the president to resign. And Democrats in the House of Representatives have drafted a four-page impeachment resolution for incitement of insurrection, charging Trump with willfully inciting violence against the government by urging his followers to march to the Capitol. Today, federal authorities announcing arrest of those who took part in the assault on the Capitol. I'll put a quarter on for desk. Richard Barnett, the man with his feet on Nancy Pelosi's desk, arrested in Little Rock, Arkansas, facing multiple charges. AFP photographer Saul Loeb took this now infamous picture of Barnett. I found Richard Barnett sitting at a staff member's desk in her office with his feet up, just making himself at home. You know, it just sort of like he owned the place and rifling through the mail on the, on the desk. And, you know, it was just sort of a, a drawing sight. Taking this series of photos to illustrate the contrast between Barnett and Pelosi. Here you have Nancy Pelosi, one of the highest members of the U.S. government in this theoretically highly secure location in this highly secure building. And these people are just basically doing whatever they want and looking whatever they want. Also arrested Lonnie Kaufman, who authorities say brought these 11 Molotov cocktails along with handguns and an M4 carbine assault rifle like this one to the Capitol. In the morning before the mob set siege to the Capitol, Trump and his family were watching the rally backstage. Hi, Ivanka. In this since-removed video from the president's son, Don Jr.'s Facebook account, his girlfriend, Kimberly, offering what was just the first of many calls to action. Yes, have the time to do the right thing. On stage, speaking to a sea of followers, the president's family and allies riled up the crowd. If you're going to be the zero and not the hero, we're coming for you. Let's have trial by combat. Trump spoke for an hour. We will not take it anymore urging his followers to take action. Here, we're gonna walk down to the Capitol. 
because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength. Mr. Arnold, excuse, excuse me. To protest excuse me. They didn't make themselves known as you. And you had some very bad people in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. And during the 2020 presidential debate, he used language that foreshadowed Wednesday's events. You want to call him? What do you want to call him? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacist and, and white like me to condemn? White proud proud supremacist boys. and right proud, proud boys. Boys. Stand back and stand by. Many point to the president's words as the match that lit the flame at Wednesday's rally. Hello and welcome to the People's News. It's news check and news package update as of January 9th, 2020. As we all know, President Donald Trump has been banned from using Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, because these social media sites believe that he used their sites to incite the riot that happened on Wednesday at the Capitol. After his ban off of these sites, he posted a statement on POTUS, POTUS Twitter, that is the official Twitter for the President of the United States. He actually posted the following, and I'll let you read it right here. So what's Trump's next move once he leaves office? Yesterday, Google pulled Parler from the Google Play Store. Parler is like Twitter, but without um, censorship, basically. And the Apple Store has also threatened to pull Parler from their sites as well, for the exact same reasons. Wouldn't it be insane if we saw two different economies because of this division that Trump has caused, basically meaning that um, what if we saw two different two different type of financial economies, the Trump supporter economy and the actual American economy, meaning that it, because Trump's talking about having his own platform, he wants to have his own as I reported earlier, he wants to have his own news network. So, I mean, but wouldn't that be insane having like, two different uh, internets, having Trump Net and I guess the actual real internet and then also having like Trump phones and the actual real phones. I mean, that'd just be so insane, wouldn't it? And like I said, he, he wants to start his own platform. We don't know what's going to be on it. And as you know, Democrats want Donald Trump to be impeached for a second time. They're trying to impeach him a second time. Isn't that nice of them? I do got some, as you notice, I played some footage from uh, the riots as well as other sources at the very beginning of this video. So I hope you guys actually saw the, the mayhem that was really going on there. The government is still working on distributing the money from the, the current stimulus package. The $600 stimulus checks, they're still working on distributing that. But they're also already planning ahead for the set, another st stimulus package. Um, labor organizations and advocacy groups are already pushing for a monthly stimulus check and federal unemployment benefits of $600 a week. Now, wouldn't that be nice? Yes, getting them monthly stimulus checks and $600 a week. But I would imagine if they did that, they'd probably put more stricter restrictions on the monthly stimulus checks as well as the $600 a week because I actually think they should. If you're gonna get if you're gonna get unemployment, you shouldn't really get a second any more stimulus checks because you're getting a continued stimulus check on his unemployment from the federal government. That is that is my opinion on this. The IRS has already sent out over a hundred million stimulus checks, but the government is still going through the stimulus pa this stimulus package. The politicians are already put, planning ahead for the next stimulus package. Labor and advocacy groups are calling for Biden to go big on the next stimulus package. Those groups are saying that the job support is proof there needs to be a massive stimulus package. 
They recommend monthly, if both not quarterly, stimulus payments or end more FPUC at $600 a week. And I do not disagree. I mean, I do, I do think that if they do give out a more stimulus check, monthly stimulus checks, that the people that are actually unemployment since they're receiving a monthly stimulus check should not receive monthly stimulus checks if they get unemployment. But I do believe they are also going to try, try to tighten the reins a bit, maybe lower the income threshold for um, the, those receiving monthly stimulus checks if they do actually approve this or actually put it through the process. Because I figure they're probably going to go like maybe $50,000 for singles, $100,000 for married couples to tighten the reins so it actually is a more skinnier budget, but yet they still try to cover all of the people that need to get it. And let's see what Congress does. I mean, right now they're, st they're still uh, reeling over the whole uh, incident that happened at the Capitol. And as you saw from some of the stuff I showed you, it was pretty bad. I mean, they actually even got into the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi's office, and took some of her pro her um, documents, as I'm sure is her laptops. But we don't have to worry about the laptops because the government actually has the ability to track those laptops so they can find out who actually has them. So let's just hope the government actually does give us more money than six hundred dollars, because otherwise we're going to be hurting, and most likely chances are another riot will probably happen yet again. And who will they blame this time? Because Trump won't be in office no more at that point. But until next time, you guys have a wonderful Saturday. Have an excellent evening. I will broadcast again to you tomorrow when more information is available. Until then, you guys have a wonderful day.